Today we're going to show you how to wire up an inlet module switch, plug it into your Arcade 1UP switch so that when you turn it on, everything's going to turn on. Your PC, your control panel, even your marquee. Check it out. Let's get started. <laughs> For parts, first off we're going to need an inlet module switch itself, which usually comes disassembled and I get these in packs of 6 from Amazon. Next up you'll need a surge protector or power strip, which we're going to cut off the end and plug directly into the inlet module switch. Lastly, to create the actual connection to the stock RK1UP switch, we're going to need some extra wire. So I have 14 gauge stranded electrical wire that I got from Lowe's, so we're going to use this to wire it up. And then to connect the connections, we need some insulated female spade connectors, which you can get these in packs of about 50 or 100 from Amazon as well. Next, some tools to be able to get the job done. You have your basic wire strippers here, which are also going to strip the wires, but also crimp these insulated wire connectors using this section. You'll need some electrical tape here, uh, and then some last tools that I highly, highly recommend in order to make the connection to the RK1 up switch. We do need to create a female spade connection of about this size using these uh, wiring crimping terminals. So this is a crimping set that I get from Perceva. Um, so I highly recommend it. We're gonna be using two of these to be able to make a connection to the Arcade 1UP switch. And lastly, these are just some more advanced tools that you can use. This is a wire fly crimping tool just for these insulated strippers. If you're gonna be doing a lot of these, this might be a good investment, but otherwise you can use your other wire strippers. And instead of using electrical tape, I usually highly recommend insulated um, heat shrink tubes instead of electrical tape. But these are just more optional, but these are your base supplies that you'll need to get the job done. Let's start by putting the inlet module switch together. First you have the fuse itself and then the holder. So all you need to do is snap the fuse into this holder place just like that. Next grab your inlet module switch and you're going to line it and orient it into this slot here by putting it here and then snapping it in. Once it's secure, we need to add the switch inside. So you have your off switch of the O and the on switch here with this, this dash mark. So make sure you put it into it with the off switch towards the left side. So on the back side, when you see this, there's two different sides here where the terminals are wider and narrower here. So make sure the wider terminals are on the left, the ones that are closer together on the right. Once you have it lined up, just snap it in and you're ready to go. Next, we're gonna prep your power strip or surge protector. So from here, we're gonna cut off about three inches from the end of the plug here, just using your actual uh, wire strippers here. So there's a cutter here that works really well. We're gonna just go ahead and cut the end off just like that, and then measure about three inches of space to have here. Make sure you leave enough length for wherever you wanna put this inside of your cab as well. So this may vary, but I like to do about three inches of space, just like that. Now inside here, you're gonna see three different wires that are already insulated here, a green, a white, and a black wire, and we're gonna be reusing this. So we need to remove the plastic sheath around here. So using your wire cutters and the sharper edge, just slightly make small cuts, uh, maybe about an inch in halfway through. So I'm just slightly making small cuts, not cutting all the way through because I don't want to ruin the inside of it. So once you have enough of the plastic kind of cut, then you can use your stripper to just bend it and start to expose that cut area that you have. So now I'm using my stripper again to bend the other side and it's going to bend back the wire strippers, uh, the plastic part of these, and then we can remove this from here. So once we have that removed completely, then we'll be able to separate this and remove the three wires completely from its plastic sheath. So there one, there's the black one, here's the green one, and the white one right here. So now you have your three wires exposed, and normally when you wire up power, the colors usually mean certain things. The green is your ground, your white is your neutral, and then the black wire is usually your active kind of hot wire here. So we're gonna wire this up into the inlet module switch using these same colors. So we're gonna put away the green one for right now and we're gonna make connections to the end of these using our spade connectors. To prep these wires, we're gonna remove about, I'd say a quarter of an inch from each edge here using your wire strippers. And then we're going to add in these insulated female spade connectors on the end here. So you can get these in packs of about 50 or 100, sometimes smaller, but these are just gonna fit right over the edge here. 
and then the bottom part of your wires have a section where you can actually crimp insulated crimpers here. So we're gonna line it up in that section, right in this section here. Squeeze down as hard as you can. I usually like to do it in two sections to make sure I do it tightly. And that's it on both sides. So I'm just gonna repeat this section for all four of these. Next, we're gonna do the same thing with the leftover end here. We need to expose a part of the wires here. So again, about two to three inches of space. And you're going to start by just cutting a little bit around the edges and then peeling it back so that we don't cut anything off. Now that your wire is exposed, we're gonna do the same thing, adding in the female insulated speed connectors to these. So you see me struggle a little bit to use the wire crimpers and they're perfectly fine to use, but I wanna demo just using this tool here, which is the WireFi insulated crimping terminals. So once you put this uh, crimper in here into the slot, all you need to do is stick your wire inside. And then this is actually a little bit more leverage where I can just even do this with two hands slightly and it crimps down and makes a secure connection too. So if you have the tools, use them, but otherwise this works fine too. Okay, time to wire up the inlet module switch. So we're gonna start off with the inner sides here, which is the black hot wire section, these two wires here. So go ahead and line it up and plug these in. Next is the neutral wire, which is gonna be this top one here, going to this bottom one here. And now for our power switch protector or power strip, we're going to start with the ground, which is this bottom terminal here. We're gonna skip the hot wire in the middle and just wire up this white one on top. So again, if you were normally just using this as a module switch, you would wire this up to here. This would work perfectly, but we're gonna be making a connection to our stock arcade one up switch. So leave this hot wire exposed and we're gonna be wiring up our 14 gauge wire to connect to this and to this. Next up, we have our 14 gauge electrical stranded wire here. So I get these from Lowe's or Home Depot. You can get them in different size. I need about three feet of space because one of these ends is gonna go from our stock arcade one-up switch to the back of the cab where the inlet module switch is. So once you have enough wire, just go ahead and cut one size to length. And then we're going to use that same length wire to cut a secondary strip the same size as well. When I get here, I'm gonna leave a little extra space at the end here as well because I need to get it into my inlet module switch. So two ends of this 14 gauge wire are gonna plug into our inlet module switch, one in this section here on the inlet module switch itself, the black wire, and then one into this black wire that's coming out of your surge protector. So we're gonna need to do one female spade connector here and then make a male connection to fit into here. That connection, we're gonna need a male spade connector here. So this is where I recommend that Perceive a crimping set. So you need to make sure you get the right size one. These are the 4.8 millimeter crimper types. So this is the male version of it here. So to use this crimper, we're gonna place the uh, terminal uh, in end on the middle side here. Crimp it down so it stays a little bit secure in place, just like that, and it's exposed. And then we're gonna take our wire, which I've already kind of stripped on the end here, put it inside the crimper and then crimp down with both hands pretty tight make sure that's a really secure solid connection so now we have our male connector here and this one is the male one that's going to connect into this wire here now this wire is a little bit exposed here so this is where I recommend using some electrical tape to go ahead and just make sure that it's insulated and secure or you can use the heat shrink tube to also cover this up as well so you don't want any of this wire exposed. They also sell the male insulated connectors as well so if you want to just buy these, these are the male versions of the insulated connectors that fit into here but if you're using this spade connector set it works just as well. Now I have my last other female spade connector we're going to crimp down and then we're going to connect them to our inlet module switch so this one is going to go here and then the male connection that we made is going to go right here and again for this i'm going to use some electrical tape and make sure that i cover up that exposed wire on this connection here now for the other end of the wire, we need the smaller 2.8 millimeter connectors here. And so we're gonna grab these, use our wire crimping terminals the exact same way, 
we're gonna put it in the smallest section and crimp it down so it's nice and tight. Now that the spade connectors are on, they're still exposed with the metal bearing there. And so um, I do recommend getting either electrical tape or these uh, heat shrink tubes that will cover it. So if you have a heat shrink tube, you can get the right size. This is just gonna cover it down. You can heat shrink that down. Otherwise, you can take some electrical tape as well. Just cut a small piece. Make sure everything that's metal that's exposed is covered before you connect it to anything. So let's take a look at the stock RK1 up switch here. So this can handle a load of 6 amps at 125 volts. So it can handle quite a bit here. Um, we're going to be running a PC um, inside most of my mods or if you're running a Pi um, or your sound, this should be able to handle most everything. Uh, but you don't want to load up your power surge protector with tons of stuff. So make sure you check what you're putting in there because that's what the load can handle on your switch. Now again, this is a sample switch. This would normally be installed on the back of your control panel. So on the back side, you'll see two versions of this that's already installed. We're just going to use the bottom two terminals that are right below this and then connect these connectors there. So make sure this is really tight and secure. Um, you know, I would use your wire crimpers to, um, you know, either pliers to crimp down that section just a little bit more, just like, you know, use your pliers to press down. So there's a really tight, secure connection. You don't want this to be loose coming off when you're powering up your cab at all. So that's a test connection there. And let's go ahead and test everything out. So again, once you're all done, this will be normally mounted into the back of your cab, exposed on the back side. So this is gonna plug into here. Your surge protector is going to be mounted on the inside of your cab, so you definitely need to might need to pull this out and rewire it back in. And then this is going to be actually your on your control panel where your RK1 up, or, uh, power switch is. So let's go ahead and test this out. When I plug this on and hit the on button, you'll see this start to light up. So we know that this power switch is working, but your surge protector isn't turned on because the power switch isn't flipped yet. So now watch what happens when I flip this switch. So when I flip the switch here, this is what's going to remain create that remote power switch for the surge protector. So this is bridging that connection for these two wires into the hot wire on the inlet module switch and then the hot wire on the power switch. So it's bridging that connection and making sure that the power gets applied to your surge protector. And that's it. Once you have everything wired up, you can plug your Pi, your PC into this, and then this is going to be able to start up everything when it detects power. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Again, please make sure you follow everything, uh, you know, like I said, and uh, use this with caution. This is electricity after all. Lastly, I want to just show one optional advanced thing that you could do as well. If you find the, you have these extra extension cables, which you can get pretty cheaply um, online, then you can create um, an extension cable in here so you don't have to cut the plug on your surge protector and you can reuse it for other things as well. All you need to do is follow the same principles, grab the black hot wire from the extension cord and then make a, an ex, uh, you know, just a little small wire using your 14 gauge wire from the hot wire to here and then you're going to wire up these two cables directly into the power up switch just like you did before. So I hope that's super helpful guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys can take it to the next level and we'll see you next time. Thanks.